Hey guys, what's going on? So today I have Professor Nick and Sensei Seth in the house. We're gonna talk about the similarity between sabat kicks and the karate kick. Ooh. Because Jesse yes. said that karate kicks influence, well, influenced by the sabat. Mm. Yeah. So we're gonna talk uh, about the stuff that you saw that was similar yeah. today in the seminar. Yeah, yeah, I went through a whole course of like amazing stuff. So there was a lot of it that I was like, ooh, I wasn't allowed to do that before. Now I am. And there's a lot of stuff that I was like, ooh, that looks similar. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was very cool. On the sidekick, because yeah. there's a lot of similarity in sabat, uh -huh. in the motion that you're doing with a pullback. Uh -huh. In the application, how would you use it? So you kick me. I kick you. I block and I Ooh. kick back. So it's two motions. It's One, fast. two. Yeah. So I, I block with my shin. Like Imagine a Thai box you would do, right? Yes. So you, you block, mm. stomp, stomp, yeah. This way. One, two. I just realized fighting him will be really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> the amount not for you, not for you. The amount of speed and power is no. incredible. It's what like I'm, precise. I'm bigger than you, that's why. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but the precise, so you're blocking the first shot. Yeah, here. And then... With the first kind of prepare, so I'm preparing for the kick uh -huh. with a block. Which part of the foot are you using? No, 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 uh, the shin. Oh, the shin. Yeah. Okay. We call so it a sune, sune uke. Just like a Thai boxer, right? Uh-huh. Use the shin to block. Uh-huh. And if you kick, I could also do it with the other leg. Go Ooh. this way. Yeah. Nice. Same idea. Doesn't matter which leg. Mm. Yeah. And he just ha, ha, side. Okay, kick. try. So, so you go, go one. What? No, same that's leg. Same yeah. leg. Same leg. Same leg. So you go one, two. Yeah. So you kind of stomp down. Yes. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Maybe different from Savat. Yeah, a little different from yeah. Savat, but. The motion, because we still we do this too. Yeah. But yeah. we lift and we side kick like mm, that. Yeah. Like this, and then right. side kick. Exactly. Yeah, I like the it. motion similar. Yes. Well, I'm excited to see what Professor Nick has to like do with the comparison. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So first, I think the side kick, which is the most important thing. Of course. Chasse. Yes. Side Chasse. kick. Yes. Chasse. Professor, can you demonstrate how you would do the sabat kick? Okay. So. The chasse is, uh, you have two forms, mm -hmm. okay, one with your hips uh, facing forward, mm -hmm. and that's the frontal one, and then the lateral, which is the psyche, which is the yoke over here. Okay. So, uh, the similarities is that the positioning is, is the same, and a lot of it, like, we use the front leg quite a bit sure. to, uh, to control the, the distance. Uh, in the loading, it's a little bit different in the sense that uh, we're striking with the heel, mm. as opposed to... Yeah, so uh, sometimes play the foot, sometimes okay. the heel. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so the heel or the flat part of the shoe uh, all the way up to the bottom of the foot. Okay, so, but the way we load it is, is might be a little bit different than, uh, you know, some uh, other styles. Okay. So, hip sideways, the foot turn, 90 degree angle, uh, the knee comes up and the foot comes up in the line uh, outside, inside, sorry. And then at the extension, uh, there is, uh, uh, full extension, aligning heel, knee, hip, shoulder in one straight line. And the leg has to be fully extended at the time of impact. Mm. Okay, so if you're going to use the heel, then your foot is most likely to be in extension and you have uh, some target areas and you know basically at like the top of the thigh is probably the place where it hurts the most. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's the hardest part of your foot. Yeah. Um, and otherwise, if you use it for different purposes, then uh, it might look a little bit more like not loaded as ah. much or, you know, to the body. And the way we work the body is typically like right over uh, the, the hip line. The hip line, yeah. My defense is always going uh, on those punches right here, try to go on the side, and then following up with the chassis right away. It's the same thing. So I go mid. And then I drop the foot right away. And I'm going to push this. And, but the one thing that I, I have to make sure is that I use uh, maximum range possible. Mm -hmm. So on the kicks, I'm not going to go too far because I want to get those punches to come from that position, from where I am right now. So I can plan on maybe, you know, on the first punch to take a step out to come at my kicking range and there I catch this uh, very right here. I can do that with any leg, it doesn't matter.
So that almost looks identical to karate. It's very similar. So if you look at like traditional karate, they will teach the side kick is like an up to down, where they rotate it all at the same time where okay. it comes knee up vertically, and then they rotate the whole thing and then bring it back. Um, we don't do that as much. So if you look at like sport karate, they get really sideways and they ride the surfboard. And then they pick their knee up here and their foot up. So if you look at like Wonder Boy, yeah, he throws yeah, his yeah. side kick like this, and then it'll yeah. go Felt that slide, which I noticed you guys do. Yeah, is you'll kind of like slide into it. Mm -hmm. Except the, I think the difference is, um, this is how I do it. I take my heel and I make it the higher thing. Okay. And then my toes the go toes down, down. Yeah. so I can sink right into their solar plexus. <laughs> and it fits in a little bit better. And then yeah. also I can like, bah, and then run away like all good karate boys do. So I'll go also, I don't know if you guys knew this. I didn't know this. Um, I actually just got word from, from out back. We didn't have to wear all black. Do you guys know that? Cool. No. Oh, no, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Somebody got. Okay. I don't know. Something happened. <laughs> okay. Somebody will get it. Right. Traditional karate, boom, boom, and we'll kind of rotate everything at the same time, up to down, same location. Yeah. Um, sport karate. Boom. Oh, well, typically I teach it as pull the chamber, knee to the opposite shoulder, okay. put the heel in between, and then drive with both, like this. Ah. So that's that's how I typically teach it. That's if I was going to teach it. I would teach this one. Yeah. So being already sideways. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. It's you know I found this is like the, the most difficult weapon to deal with. Yeah. Yes. One hundred. When it's I mastered. I agree. Uh, yeah. Sidekick is so hard to do. Yeah. Yes. Sparring him and Wonder Boy makes it super hard. Yeah. It's about the same, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. Yeah. The Especially the, the range. <laughs> yeah. Once you have, I mean, it's such a good tool to use to control the distance. Correct. Right. One hundred percent. Um. And what you guys do so well is is this lowest part touches the knee mm -hmm. and keeps people away. Yeah. There's like so minimal effort that has to happen here. Correct. And a lot of people think of this as like the closest thing, but if you've got like a long stance, like if you've got like a real long stance, this yeah. is this is yeah. pretty yeah. stinking far away. Yeah. Like it, it gives me a lot of range to yeah. to like kind of tap and keep no, away. It's, it's very. Uh, I found it very easy to control distance, squeeze that front leg using the psychic. Yeah, just like And especially, yeah. you know, to the leg, because there's a lot of style that don't allow those uh, psychics to the leg. Um, we, we never yeah. allowed psychic to the leg okay. in our karate program going uh -huh. up. We actually didn't kick the legs at all in our karate program. Okay. That's what I heard. So, was not allowed to kick the legs. So go here, here. Uh, karate combat started allowing the leg started kick. Allowed to, but in our sparring, we only had the foot pads. Uh -huh. And we no leg kicks, all kicks were here up, which would make sense why things would start to adjust. Yeah, and things yeah, would start yeah, to look yeah. different. Yeah, mm. it does make sense. Yeah. Can you can you kind of sort of talk about the uh, the concept of savat? I know we talk about like being touched, not being touched. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about the defense and offense and kind of like what are the phrases? Okay, so um, the major concept is touching without being touched. Touching without being touched. That means that, um, you know, it's, it's you look at what, what is a good offense. Good offense is something that allows you to strike mm -hmm. and be safe and not being uh, struck back. Okay. Right? So um, that is really the first one. It's, okay. you know, hitting, coming in and coming out. Okay? Mm. That's another way to, uh, to do it. So this in and out in Sabat is crucial. And it's crucial for what? For uh, safety purposes. Mm. Okay? It's why expose yourself to a return if you can avoid it. True. Okay, especially True. if you have a reach advantage. True. Okay. Um, now, if you don't have a reach advantage, then you have to use defense to strike back, and mm. that's why we call not being touched and touched. Not being touched but touched. Yes. So you so sort you of like use evading first. Oh. Yes. So that can be evading, that can be blocking, that can be deflecting, that can be stepping in, that can be uh, you know circling around or, or mm -hmm. uh, zoning or any of those things to allow you. I could because. If a good offense is something that allows you to strike and not being struck back, a good defense is something that allows you not to be hit, mm. but hit back. Mm. And that's really the purpose of good defense. Correct. Um, so the defense has to be active enough so it puts you in a position to strike back. Makes sense. And especially when you're missing that uh, range or distance. Mm. So if you are you know, shorter than your opponent, you're gonna have to find a way to come in. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's Angle. no other way around. Otherwise, you're just playing the game of the person just staying at distance all the time. Then you 
me like a shorter person who's getting nailed all the time. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, and, and I think the biggest problem for people is not to trust this, their defensive skills enough. Mm. Is there any, any more behind that? Yeah, there's, um, you know, at the high level, there's being able to disrupt in order to strike. Oh. So it's all the fainting and, and uh, faking and mm -hmm. uh, preparation, uh, movement, uh, zoning out, taking a person by using some tools in a position where you limiting their moves will give you a better advantage to be able cool. to strike and, and really understand that distance. So, you know, because we work in the ring, so you have to have a minimum of understanding of what geometry is mm -hmm. and what are the angles that will limit the movement of the person. How to use the weapons that you have. Mm. You know, a round kick is not just a round kick. A round kick is something that, you know, you're going to increase the impact if the person is actually moving into your kick. Yeah. Right? So you don't have to put as much force, uh, but you make them come and then... Uh, so that's ways to, to prepare those... Uh, kind of like this uh, chasse we, we talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's, if I can't reach you, yeah. you're not in the distance to hurt me anyway. Exactly. That's right? a very good point. And you know, when we talk about uh, creating combination and being comfortable with misses, mm -hmm. uh, when you, let's say you take someone into the rope and then you, uh, you fire a combination where, um, you know, you get a body shot and then, you know, a few punches and then at the end you step back far enough to uh, finish your combination with a chassé and to recover mm -hmm. and the chassé is missing because you step too far back. Yeah. That's not a problem. Yeah. Unless you drop that leg right in front of you mm. and, you know, prepare this entry for the person. But if you fire with your kick and bring this leg back, then you're creating that space that will allow you not to be struck back, even if you miss. Yeah. But again, if you always throw things with this idea of, you know, destroying all the time, mm -hmm. you have to know that those shots will miss 60 to 70% of that's, the time. That's a, that's, I think that's a, such a valuable lesson for a lot of yeah. people because to kind of summarize what you said is that if I miss a shot, it, that's okay. Yeah. Because if I miss a shot, that means our distance is far enough, mm -hmm. you won't be able to hit me exactly. as well. Exactly. So, but I think people just emphasize too much, oh, I miss a shot, crap. I need to hit my shot yeah. next time. And so I think that's important. So you, you go from the offense and you make the transition to defense. And this transition to defense is efficient only when you're in a position where the other person cannot strike back, mm. period. And if throwing um, a kick or a punch as a diversion, but it's not necessarily reaching uh -huh. and you don't let that person capitalize on that miss, then you're okay. Yeah. You're okay. That's true. And that's why, um, you know, I, I try to push people to fire combinations and mm -hmm. to be comfortable with those misses as long as those misses are not transformed that's into good. a piece that the other person can use. That's true. So if you fire, if at the end of the combination, you know, you step back, won't finish with the chassis or side kick, and then you fire that side kick with your right leg, trying to put everything you have in there, and your leg falls right in front of the person, uh -huh. then you expose because you probably dropped your hand. Yeah. Okay. Or you put too much weight on that leg. So mm -hmm. this leg is exposed, your face is exposed, that's a problem. But if you kick, you miss, and you retract, and you fall, then you'll have more time to mm. deal with possible wow. returns. That's really good.